So I picked up this uh, U seat that I did a little short on. It's in pretty good shape. There's some nicks, there's some scratches. The cover's ruined. But the seat pan is in really good shape, actually. There's almost no rust on it. Even the foam inside is still pretty good. For being 42 years old, oh my God, 42 years old, it's pretty good shape. Um, not terribly hard to find. I did find a singular one on eBay, so that's why I bought it. Uh, it's been repainted. Um, it's gonna need a little bit of body work, but nothing too crazy. I have a buddy of mine who does painting and stuff like that that I've reached out to to see if uh, when this is all done, I can send it to him to get it painted in the original colors. So that'll be nice. I wanna do, I don't know if I wanna keep it the blue and silver that it was originally. I'm a big fan of that black and orange. So we might switch it up. Not sure on that one, but I wanna get this mounted tonight. Uh, should be as simple as dropping it on, but I think they've messed with the rear tail light and uh, license plate bracket. So we're gonna pull that right off, see if this mounts on, and then we're gonna have to figure out how the tail light fits in here. Shouldn't be very difficult. So let's get to it. So when I go to mount the seat on, position this tongue in here. You can see the tail light is stuffed like way inside. So something's going on there and it looks like that license plate bracket's gonna hit that. So we're gonna go ahead and take all that stuff off and see if we can get this to clip in. So I think all they did on the license plate bracket is actually just flip it around, um, you know, 180 degrees from how it's supposed to be. Other than that, it all looks correct should just sit right on there like that. Now the tail light, I'm less sure what they did to modify it. I don't even know if this is the correct tail light. So we're just gonna go ahead, pull that off to start with. Just three connections. And then the ground. So this is a little bit harder to get to, but there's a singular bolt underneath here holding this tail light assembly on. All right, so there is our rear tail lid assembly. I think they bent it and then they drilled an additional hole in it. I wonder if this is supposed to be, ooh. what they did is they destroyed it. Yeah, it's actually cracked when I re-bent it. Metal right there cracked on the drill, on the drill hole. I have to see if I can find an original tail light bracket to compare to, but, that's all out of the way now. Let's see if we can get this seat fitted. All right, let's see this fits. A little tight. It's tight, it's real tight. In fact, that side is so tight to click. There we go, I don't want to go. Now get it unhooked. That's getting caught up on, on these little hooks somewhere. So it's catching on the retention hooks here. That's the other one. Um, I have them loose to try and give it a little bit of play so they can move back and forth. So I can kind of figure out which way they need to go. I don't see any movement in the tongue area. You know, I've got some dicum. Let's throw some dicum on there and see where it's uh, catching. All right, so I just put a little dicum on the hooks. I don't know if you can see that one in the shadow. There we go. Just dyed them blue. It's catching on the back side of these little hooks. You can see where it's taking the dicum off. So that's where it's catching. It's not a whole lot. It's not a whole lot at all. It's on both sides. I am gonna tighten these back down in the most forward position I can get them. I'm guessing there's just a little bit of inconsistency on exactly where these sit. Um, so, possible that they just need a little wear on them. This seat's in pretty good shape. So, we'll keep trying it, see if it gets a little bit better. 
So we're going to pull these hooks as far forward as we can get. So I'd really like to use this seat pan. Worst comes to worst, I can uh, I can take the fender off of this seat pan and use the one that fits. But this seat pan is in much better shape than the one I have. I really like to use this one. All right, let's see if that did anything. Still really, really tough. Yeah, yeah, that's really tight. I might have to take a file to those hooks and just... So now we can see how far back that taillight's supposed to sit. So it really should be right about there. Something like that. License plate bracket. It'll just be like this. So that's easy. They didn't do anything on that to modify it. Just flipped it around to kind of bob the fender on it. Okay, after some messing about and looking up stock photos of these online, trying to figure out what's going on and what parts I'm missing, I figured it out. I'm missing a couple of plastic pieces that go around the, uh, the rear fender and this, it is a, a Honda taillight. I mean, the, the taillight housing looks correct. Um, I just have it very precariously mounted on here as you can see. Um, but it just doesn't look identical. So I don't know if this is off a different CB and just not a Hawk. I, I really don't know. Not sure what they did there, but the ones that I found are mounted a little bit different and they have plastic sheath that comes around it to match up with the fender. The good news is I actually did find one for sale. I'll try and splice in some pictures so you guys can see, uh, you know, what I'm talking about. But I found one for sale, so I'll order it in. It comes with a whole rear fender assembly. Um, I have no reason to replace that, so I'll just have a spare, I suppose, because uh, I can't find just the parts and pieces I need. This it, this has definitely been one of those, like, <laughs> they're, they're few and far between. I did have an idea with the seat. So for the seat to fit, I'm gonna attempt to switch the tongue on the seat pan from my old one to my new one and uh, and see if that works with getting the seat placed. Okay, so what I ended up doing was I took the tongue off of the new seat that I have and replaced it the one with the one from my old seat pan. And now, let's see if it works. I'm just hoping that this is going to make the spacing correct. Okay, let's just hang out. Wow, that definitely went in a lot easier. Actually. That's definitely a lot better. It's not perfect. You're still catching a little bit on here. You can see the wear on them. Well, there's a concept of what it's going to look like. So there's a whole plastic piece that sits in here and it holds this rigid with everything. It's just, it's missing, it's been replaced and lost. So I'm still not happy with how the seat fits. It's definitely fitting a lot better since I switched this tongue out, um, but it, it's still tight and it's not really wanting to click in perfect. Um, I can see where it's hitting. So my thought process was, I really want to use the seat pan. It's in a lot better shape than the one that I have on there. Uh, the original is pretty rusted up on the bottom. Um, this one's in really nice shape. The seat cushion's in a lot better shape as well. So I'm going to just change the hooks out, the spare hooks, with the ones off my original seat pan uh, in hopes that, I don't know, that, that they fit better. Um, I don't know if they're just going to be like a different amount of wear on them or if they're hand fitted from the factory. I really don't know. It, my hope is that it will fit better. So we're going to give it a shot. So pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. We're just going to take these four bolts out and remove these hooks and then swap them with the other ones. Here's the new seat.
Okay, let's see how it fits. Check the release on it. Oh, that's much better. Yeah, it clicks right in. And then that left hand side's just still a little tight on the release. It's not bad. That's much better. Big improvement for such a small thing. Nice. All right, that's it for the seat. That's on there really well. It clicks in perfectly. Um, those hooks are just a little bit different dimension, I guess. So it works with this, uh, this frame in the seat better, which is great. It's a really simple little fix. Um, obviously the seat's gonna need to get recovered. It's got some rips and tears in it, but that's a project for another day. Um, not super worried about that currently. Uh, next big thing is the original tail light and the plastic fender that was supposed to go around it. It attaches to the, the lower fender underneath the inner fender. I was able to find one complete assembly on eBay, including the inner fender actually, but uh, I probably won't end up using that. This one seems to be in fine shape, but that was the only way I could get it. So that's on its way and that should be here in the next couple days. So that'll be good. And it's probably gonna hang out for a little bit, do some little finicky work, finish work around the, you know, the fenders and stuff like that, clean it up, try and clean up the side covers. Um, I, I don't know exactly when I'm gonna be able to get it painted. It's a, a large amount of money that I just don't have allocated right now. But once that time comes, it'll be ready for paint, which is awesome. So get this thing back to its original condition I'll be real, real happy with that because this bike, I mean, it's only got 21,000 miles on it. You know, it's not even that, uh, that many miles. I mean, I have more miles on my CBR and that thing's a 2009. So I'm really excited to get this thing back to its proper, proper glory. Real happy with it. Happy with the parts that I've been able to find. And uh, really, really, really excited to ride it. Well, I guess this is what I get for saying that spring has sprung. It is 33 degrees out. And this garage is unheated. But I got this in today. This is the original tail light and uh, I guess trim piece assembly. It also comes with a whole new uh, inner fender. Super stoked about that. Uh, I found one on eBay, <laughs> complete assembly. So I was like, yeah, all right, well, let's do it. Uh, so yeah, that's the last piece I need to finish up the tail on this. Uh, and while I was at it, I also ordered rear shoes. Just gonna redo them while I have the whole damn thing apart. There's no reason not to do it. Um, I've always kind of been one of those people that if you're in there, do it. Just get it all done. At the end of this, I am gonna kind of uh, throw together a, an expenses list on what everything costs me and how much I have into this bike total. I got this bike for free. It was given to me by a friend of mine, which I super appreciate. Um, all the parts and pieces I have into it. My guess, straight guess right now, is I've got um, $400 into this bike. So I'm gonna bring, like, I'll break it down at the end of the video um, probably when I take it for a ride, um, whatever video that ends up being. And uh, we'll see what the, the total cost was of it. I'm still waiting on my tires. They should be in this week. And hopefully, this is second week in March, um, before the end of the month, I will be out riding this. So if everything goes well, that's how it's gonna be. Anyway, today, we're gonna finish up mounting this up. All right, let's pop that seat off. Oh, it's so much nicer now that I switched over all that hardware. Should be pretty straightforward. All right, last bolt. And now. Hey, all right, not too bad. There is the original 
Uh, it's not in super great shape. Here's the new one. It's actually in pretty good shape. Oddly enough, a lot of the parts I've been finding for this bike have been in really good shape. So that's a big, uh, big bonus. Okay, let's hook up this tail light. Okay, there's the ground. Then pretty straightforward, just little barrel connectors, brown to brown, green and yellow to green and yellow. Well, I don't have a tail light, but I do have brake lights, which makes me think that the bulb is just dead. So let's take a look at that real quick. I'm not terribly surprised that the bulb is crap. I don't expect them to test these things before they ship it out. I don't really blame the guy. Okay, take that. Boy, I'll be honest. It looks okay. What if I just don't have one of my connections well done? But we're still going to switch it out with the old one just because I know this one is good. Okay, let's try that again. Still nothing. Hmm. So I've got brake lights. Check my ground connection. Boy, that feels good. Interesting. Let's try our old one. Top one is our old assembly now wired in. I turn that on. I've got no brake lights. What the hell is going on? But I've got, I've got brake lights, but I don't have any rear lights. Okay, well this gets more and more interesting. So, it's something further up on the bike. Let's follow it up to see if there's any connection anywhere. Boy, I could have blown a fuse, I suppose. <clears throat> could be a taillight fuse. this real quick. Oh, it seems loose, I'll tell you that much. Oh, ha, ha, I figured it out. You're not going to be able to see this, but I swear to you, there is a very fine break in this fuse right here. Let's see, this is a seven amp Ooh, do i have another seven amp so it's a seven amp fuse um tail light fuse blue i have no idea when it's possible i never had tail lights worked i thought i did but maybe i was wrong and it was just the brake lights um anyway i don't have any more all the ones off of my other cvs are 15 amp fuses this one oddity is a seven amp fuse same with the headlight so i'm gonna pick up a couple of these tomorrow I'll run out and grab a couple of uh, spares just in case, especially messing with the electrical system. God forbid I just well, happen to catch it and blow another one. Last thing I want to do is have to run back out. So I'll, I'll grab a handful. Plus the other one is also going to be very, very old and fragile. Um, so that'll be an easy fix though. I'm glad it's not something more serious. I'm glad it's, well, theoretically not the new housing, but that's not going to stop us from putting the tail on and seeing how it looks all together for the first time. I'm very happy about this and I'm very excited. So let's throw the tail on in the seat and get a good look at what this thing will look like um, in its stock configuration. 
We also need to do the handlebars. I forgot about that earlier, but the handlebars will be uh, done as well. So let's get this all together. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. Does it work? Yes. And it looks fantastic. Ah, oh, that makes me so happy. It looks perfect. So there it is. Completed tail. Really, really stoked with how that looks. This bike looks so much better. Yeah, that bike looks so much better like that. Still need to do the handlebars, but there we go. All right, this thing is wrapping up pretty quickly. We need uh, a new blinker cover, and this blinker is broken. But that is, uh, that's about it. Yeah, I'm stoked with that. That looks great. All right, I ran around to uh, three or four different stores today, and I was able to find seven and a half amp fuses. I couldn't find any seven amps. Um, I'm not particularly worried about the extra half an amp. It should be plenty close enough. Um, eventually I'll track down a proper seven amp, but uh, seven and a half was the closest I could find today. Just a proof of concept, make sure that this is the issue, which I'm a hundred percent sure it is, but you never know. So go ahead, throw this fuse in, which is super simple. Done. It's a little bit longer than the stock fuses, but that should work just fine. Let's see if we have tail lights. All right, key on. And we have tail lights now. Just double check, make sure we still got brake lights. Oh yeah, perfect. All right, that's the job done. So I have a proper size tire for this CB that's not absolutely flat. I mean, this one is got tears in it like crazy. So I want to pull the tire off the CB's rim and we're gonna install it onto this one. I don't have a tire machine. I'm gonna just kind of wing it and attempt to do it the old fashioned way. Never done it, except for like pedal bikes. But uh, yeah, let's see if, uh, if I can pull it off. And if I can't, I'm going to cry for help from my buddy Rob and go use his tire machine. But we're gonna give it a shot. So my plan was to use this takeoff from the CB750. Um, I knew it was an older tire and uh, didn't really think about it until I started trying to work the bead off and took a look at the date code. The date code is, let's see if I can get it in frame here, 0401. So that's um, 20, almost 23 years old. So that's not going on there. Uh, instead, I'm going to order a new set of um, probably just Shinkos or something inexpensive. It, it needs new tires, but it's nothing fancy. Um, I think they're 712s, Shinko 712s. Yeah, Shinko 712s. And I can get a complete set shipped to my door for this for $161. That's a steal. So that's gonna get put off for a minute and uh, we will be putting new tires on that, which it needed anyway. I was just being impatient because I wanted to take it for a ride, but uh, not, not 23 year old tires. You could feel, as I'm trying to break the bead, you could feel how crusty and crackly they are. And I really don't want to go down on a 40 year old bike because I was too cheap to buy tires. All right guys, well, that's it for this one. And uh, in the next one, we'll throw the handlebars on, throw some tires on, and it's ready to go.